Look at your man. Look at me. Sadly, he's not me. But he can smell like me if he buys Tuxedo Man's uh, body wash. <laughs> yes. Mamo-chan wins the wet t-shirt contest. He also wins the stage performance contest. And the making fangirl squee contest. <laughs> Hello. I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal, Season 3, Episodes 35 and 36. That new outro is pure, unadulterated fan service for the girls. I mean, god damn, Mamaru. Down, boy! <laughs> yes, because we get almost every version. We get Tuxedo Mask, we get Mamaru, and we get Prince and Demion. We also get Mamoru in a wet t-shirt. Rain. I'm so sad. Look at me. <laughs> Look how beautiful I am. Uh, and suddenly I have flashbacks of our own host club. <laughs> yes, of King doing that sad, aloof, lonely thing. <laughs> Under Ringe's suggestion. Mm -hmm. These episodes were kind of interesting, and I almost cried during the first one. Like, that's so sad. They're going to bring her back, right? They have to bring her back. There was more series, right? The manga continued up to this point, right? Yes, and in this translation, it was much more blatant that she was dead. The translation in my manga made me think more of um, plot coma. Ah. But that may have just been interpretation. Yeah, but that also reminds me of, particularly in that part, I saw some, at least to me, weird grammar errors. Like they used the word alive wrong. There were all sorts of grammar and syntax things in both of these episodes. I think they may have rushed the translation a little bit. And the word sooner was also used wrong. It should have been soon instead of sooner. And like I said, alive is used incorrectly. It should have just been uh, living or something like that. I, can't remember. I remember reading it going, no, that's the wrong word. Uh, you, you're, you ha you're in the same area, but you need to like move over a little bit. <laughs> you almost hit it. Congratulations. Here's a star. <laughs> I think what may be going on is maybe we're getting near the end of uh, this chunk of episodes is near the end of the buffer that they were making that they get all translated beforehand and then they started releasing it together in the US and now we're hitting the part where the Americans are getting like the episode only a couple of weeks before it comes out up here or something. <laughs> so they have to rush the translations. Oh, at least based on past experience, they should be updating it later so we can go back and rewatch and can we take just a second to go, oh my god, that box set? <laughs> I don't I don't know that I can quite bring myself to do that. And then depending on who you order from, you get extra bonuses. Oh, apparently I missed this box set. It's only the first 13 episodes of Sailor Moon Crystal. Uh -uh. It's full of shinies, and if you order from a particular retailer, you will also get an extra shiny of a sun catcher. Ah. Uh. I think I'll just stick with watching the dubbed on Hulu. <laughs> <laughs> Which probably also has all the animation corrections that were introduced in the DVD and Blu-ray releases in Japan. <laughs> I really object to buying 13 episode box sets. I mean, it's better than four episodes, but... Okay, that's my two cents on that. Back to the specific episodes. Apparently, Mamo-chan's healing abilities go beyond just healing. They can keep a body alive for a period of time. Yes, he is one of the most versatile clerics I've ever seen. <laughs> and I see they're still set on, we must kill her. And Sailor Moon's like, no, we can't kill anyone. Killing's bad. Bad, bad guy. <laughs> I vaporize them. Though I keep getting the feeling that her powers are less about vaporizing things and more like purifying things. And this is why only the bad guys get destroyed and people get healed. This also brings up the theory in my head that these people died long ago. They are no longer human anymore, and they're technically not the people who they were when that person came here. And I'm talking about some scenes from the second episode of these two, but basically my theory is, like, when that person arrived, and that guy did, and that guy swallowed whatever that thing was, they died, basically, at that moment. They are, they were no longer human. These entities that act like them are just not really them, but they think they're them. Yeah, they pretty much... Kellenite and oh, Kaori and the professor being taken over had complete personality changes 
even though some of what the professor does academically, you know, still falls into the realm of what he did before, you know, there's really nothing left of the kind man that was Hitaru's father. And whether that was entirely due to the vesselization or a combination of factors, following your theory, then the reason that Hotaru is still able to survive is because she has the powers of a sailor guardian. So that would be why she's not only not been consumed, but is able to fight back. Mm -hmm. And finally, I get all the imagery that's been going around with uh, Chibi Moon and her. This whole thing with their souls and that body <laughs> makes so much sense now. <laughs> Like, why are these two always being referenced so close together and all this other stuff and the imagery in the intro, I think it is. And the... Oh, I get it now. Thank you. Explanations work wonders on my uh, brain. <laughs> the fighting was nice. The animation is really good. It's a nice subtle stuff with the music again. So that's really cool. Uh, and of course, the poor Sailor Scouts in the next episode. But we'll get to that soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to stay chronological this time, except for talking about the outro, but that was just so awesome. I had to talk about it first. <laughs> I mean, you know, I find him attractive, so. <laughs> yes, it's like, I, I want to, like, take that outro and redub it over, you know, strike a pose. <laughs> or I'm too sexy for my clothes. <laughs> no, I like the outfit. <laughs> Uh, and I'm just saying overall, he's too sexy. <laughs> uh, so that brings up the whole wonderful thing of men fantasize about women naked. Women fantasize about men in clothes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, so, any points you want to go over about this particular episode? Both episodes stayed pretty close um, to the manga. And by the way, this brings us to the end of volume seven now in the anniversary edition re-release. Ah, oh, and that you saying that reminded me of another point I wanted to bring up is I felt the sequence with the girls getting trapped in the labyrinth and getting tricked and everything felt a little rushed, especially with a second viewing. Uh, it just seemed like everything was going kind of quickly there and it didn't quite explain what was going on. I knew they were kind of being like, hypnotized which was kind of confusing with my first viewing i thought they were just falling for the classic trap of like oh here yeah, we can grant you your dreams do you really want to do go back to what you were doing no they were actually kind of being hypnotized by the fact that the glint in their eyes disappeared in some of the shots yes because the guardians are very devoted so it takes more than saying oh here i'll make you a pop star here i'll give you this garden of roses Oh yeah, and that's another point I want to bring about those scenes is like both Mercury and Jupiter almost like, why are you reacting like that? I would be highly suspicious if I were you too. It's like, whoa, this place suddenly changed into a giant supercomputer. I am not gonna pay attention to the computer, I'm gonna look around and see what the what the heck's going on. Jupiter, look at all these roses. Oh look, they're all special hybrids. Can't pay attention to that now. I'm in a deathly situation. <laughs> but both of them basically fangirl over, oh look at this giant supercomputer and look at these hybrid roses, oh my god! <laughs> And both of those times were obviously before they were hypnotized or whatever, mind controlled. <laughs> At least both Mars and Venus were both, uh, what the heck's going on? <laughs> yeah, their resistance was a little stronger. And out of all of them, Venus's was actually had the most changes because she had a little more um, exposition when she first heard the music. Because she made the connection that, oh, this music's making me ill, didn't this happen before? And she made more of the connection before she fell under the hypnosis. Mm. Also, the fake scouts that were presented to Sailor Moon had a bit more battle damage on them in the manga. Mm. That's a nice classic scene of, oh, look, all your loved ones hate you. They never liked you in the first place. Especially this Mamo-chan guy. He wants to kill you. Yes. But first he's going to go do your job for you because you're incapable, and then he's going to come back and kill you. In the meantime, your daughter's choking you to death. Yeah. It's like, how is that even working? Her hands barely fit around Sailor Moon's throat. Nightmares don't have to make logical sense. And again, the classic trope of, oh, we already defeated these warriors, and now they've somehow been brought back again. 
Mm-hmm. It's just like the final set of boss levels on a Mega Man game. But, but I already defeated all of you. What are you doing here again? It's like, God damn it, not another boss rush. One after the other, one after the other, and after the other. Ah! Where is the cheat code to skip this? <laughs> Please continue. Mm -hmm. And Kalanite feeling threatened now that Mistress Nine has returned. Mm -hmm. And what's with these numbers? Like, what was his name? Pharaoh 90? <laughs> yes, Pharaoh 90, Mistress Nine, the Witch is Five. Mm -hmm. What's with the numbers? I must know. <laughs> Ask Google. Because <laughs> there isn't anything in my translation notes regarding the numbers probably because numbers translate pretty well so should we move on to the next episode or is there more <laughs> let's move forward we'll backtrack if needed oh well, you start on this one uh, i may be crossing episodes a little bit but really you'll take the elevator down in an emergency situation you were never supposed to take the elevator <laughs> no that definitely happens in that next episode <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm like, that's a bad idea. Oh, look, more hypnosis crazy stuff. Oh, wow, yeah, see the moon breaks out of it, of course. We also get that wonderful thing of like, oh, we know the other scouts are in terrible danger because my special su Super Sailor Moon power is broke. Which is actually a really good point because it's, she transforms into Super Sailor Moon because all of them give her power. So if something goes wrong, they can't give you power anymore, and hmm, the scouts that are with you are okay, so obviously it's the scouts that aren't with you that are in trouble. Mm-hmm. Though well, having a single point of flare like that is kind of an issue. <laughs> like, oops, we knocked out one of the others to the scouts that's weaker. Oh, bummer, we just, we just lost our most powerful asset. Ooh. <laughs> mm-hmm. If I was fighting against Super Sailor Moon, I would go, like, attack Chibi Moon or something. <laughs> Yeah, though Chibi Moon's out of the commission here, so. <laughs> mm hmm. I said, or something. Mm hmm. And we get more interactions between Chibi Moon and Sailor uh, Saturn? Mm hmm. Okay, I just haven't said her name enough, so it's not stuck in my brain. <laughs> well, she hasn't fully awakened as Sailor Saturn yet, but, you know, that splitting headache that Mistress Nine keeps getting, hmm, yeah, that's, that's a guardian symbol trying to appear. Girl, when she wakes up, you are so dead. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that was really interesting. I was like, wow, this this is, wow, I can't wait to see what actually happens, but it's kind of interesting. Uh, also, more creatures from the scientist guy, that wonderful fight after they get off the elevator. Also, damn, sailor scouts can jump. I mean, they're just jumping all over the place in these two episodes. Mm-hmm. Masterful acrobatics. Especially Sailor Moon in the uh, episode where she was by herself and all the other sailors were trapped in the wax until the other two arrived. Like, jump! Jump attack! Dodge attack! Jump! <laughs> well, if you're not good at fighting, you have to be good at dodging. Mm hmm. And a couple of things that were different the discussion in the elevator, the Outer Scouts made it sound more like they were just imagining the Silver Millennium where the impression that I got reading the manga was that they were actually able to use their talismans to conjure images. Because Neptune was looking into her mirror, Pluto was looking into the orb on her garnet rod, and Uranus was looking up into the sky, but it looked like she had like cut a path with swath with her sword. Mm. Oh yeah, I remember that now. Yeah, and in my translation... In the manga, Sailor Moon actually asks what it was like. Mm -hmm. And I remember that because the later Sailor Moon also uses it, the idea of imagining something or remembering something to give herself the energy and hope to go on. Yes. Like I said, in the manga, it to me seems more like they say they're actually able to view it. So they were able to watch from afar where the translation provided in the episode of Sailor Moon Crystal makes it sound like they were more of just daydreaming. Which, if that's the case, those were surprisingly accurate images for a daydream of a silver millennium you've never seen. And the amounts of exposition were different. I think that the anime spent more time explaining the arrival 
of Master Pharaoh 90 and the start of the vesselization process and, you know, what happened to Hotaru because of that and all the progress they'd made. I think the anime expounded on that more. And I mm. think the trade-off was they cut back Hotaru's comments when the shell that's left of her father is destroyed because mm. they just kept, you know, the goodbye father part where in the manga translation that I have, it was more on, you know, I understand now the kind papa that I knew was no longer there after the accident. You know, I truly lost him long ago. Goodbye. Ah. You know, so that gave more understanding that, okay, this person truly wasn't my father anymore. Because instead of with just that sad crying bit, it was more of, Okay, how are you not going to blame Sailor Moon for killing your father? Mm -hmm. Where this was, oh, yes, I truly see it now. He was no longer himself. Goodbye, father. I'll miss the person you were. Mm -hmm. Kind of like what I threw. I was like, yeah, after the whole whatever you called it process, whatever they call it, because I never was able to pronounce it and pay attention to the pronunciation in the show. <laughs> Vessalization. Vessalization. Thank you. Yeah, my pet theory is pretty much after that, they pretty much die during that process. These things kind of have the memories of who these persons were, but they're not actually that person. The problem with that is some of the things that were vesselized, you know, in the early battles, because we had some humans and some cat, we had a cat, all of those survived. So I, if your theory holds then it doesn't happen instantaneously. It has to take time because those two were vesselized for a long time. And I think they were more um, perfected vesselizations. If you pay attention to what he was talking about, it's like he failed several times do, trying to do it. Mm -hmm. And himself, Kiori, Hotaru, and the Witches Five were all the really successful ones. But still, even unsuccessful ones, you would think, would follow some of the same rules. So I'm saying I think there's a time factor. I don't think it's insta-death. Probably more like a parasite slowly devouring its host. Mm-hmm. Ah. So any other differences between the two? Those were the most major things that stood out to me. But I could tell that I watch um, too much Steven Universe now when Garnet did her Garnet Orb shield, and I was like, oh, Garnet Spear. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually more Garnet Bubble. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Ah, Steven Universe, what a wonderful show. Are you caught up yet? No, I am not caught up yet. I haven't <laughs> watched anything in like two weeks, except maybe a clip of Garnet's song, possibly more than once. Oh, yeah, I pretty much figured I just I'd say it jokingly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very busy lives we have. <laughs> ah. So is that pretty much everything for these two episodes, or should we go over more if we happen to have it? No, I think that's pretty much it. You were going to say something? Yeah, I was going to say, because they're doing a great job, and we're getting close to the end of the arc, as if it wasn't obvious from the fact that, oh, yes, the final person awakened, and we're about to vesselize our master and bring him back. Lord Ganon will return! <laughs> I really enjoyed both these episodes. I'm getting excited. Like I said, I, I almost teared up during the first episode. So I was like, ooh, they're getting emotions out of me. How cruel of them. <laughs> uh, like the new outro, I was like, yep. I started laughing like crazy because I was like, yeah, this is so fan service for the fangirls. <laughs> yeah, and I was mainly going, um, Ember, do you need a jewel cup? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, well, I think that's a pretty good place to end off. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal, Season 3, Episodes... God damn it! <laughs> 35 and 36. Episodes 35 and 36. Stupid memory. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please consider subscribing. If you like my art, you can find me on Tumblr and DeviantArt. If you really like my art and want to support me to continue doing it, I have a Patreon. I also have commissions. Please check link for commission availability.